Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, I'm going to be doing a video that I've actually been requested in a lot of the comments. And it goes back to my hard proofing video that I did a few weeks ago to how to do hard proofing in Lightroom, doing the strips of pictures coming down the page. Now, a lot of you asked that, can we do this in Capture One? So in today's video, I'm going to do it in Capture One for you and actually take you through the process. It's very similar. There is a couple of limitations in Capture One versus Lightroom, but hopefully it will give you a good insight on how to hard proof in Capture One and get you some really pretty decent prints coming out and also save you a bit of time, paper and ink. So before we dive into Capture One, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button down the bottom. So without further ado, let's dive in to Capture One and have a look at how we go about hard proofing our images in Capture One. Okay, so here I am in Capture One. Now I've just brought up a picture, a bit of a stock image. So I'm just gonna use this to go through how we hard proof images in Capture One. Now, the first thing we need to do is quite similar to how we went about things in Lightroom. What we need to do is create about five or six virtual copies. Well, actually in Capture One, they're called clone variants. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on clone variant because that will clone it with all our adjustments on. If we click new variant, it will revert back to its original state. So basically I'm just gonna right click on the picture click clone variant and I'm going to make six here. So what I want to do is pick my middle point. So I'm just going to click on my number three here. And then in the exposure, I'm actually just going to put minus 0 0.25. So make it a little bit darker. Then on my number two, just at the top here, I'm going to go back over to my exposure tab and put in 0 0.50, which is half. Stop. Forgot the minus there, so I'm just going to pop that in and then we'll go a bit darker. And then here, I'm actually going to go minus one. So we get a full stop darker there. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my number four and then click on my number five. And I'm actually going to put in 0 0.25 without the minus. So it's going to brighten it up for me. Then on the number six, I'm going to put 0 0.50, half a stop. Then actually, I'm going to create another variant just because then I have seven and I'll have a middle point, which will be my number four and three either way. So on my seven here, I'm just going to put a full stop of brightness. Now that has created a very basic kind of test strip for me. So what I'm going to do now, so I've gone from one minus one stop of under exposing to plus one stop over exposing. So now what I'm going to do is just hold shift on the first, select the first one, hold shift, go to number seven and just click. And then I have them all selected. So we can see a nice range there. So now in Capture One, when I go to file print, this is where it differs a little bit because we haven't got a print tab. We've just got to go file print in Capture One. <clears throat> now you'll see here what I've actually set up already is I've gone down, basically worked my way down here. So we can select the profile in here. So if I'm printing on the matte ultra paper, we can put that there. We also select our page size. So we can do this on A4, A3, whatever size you want really. I'm gonna do it on A3, just because for video, it's a bit easier for you guys to see, but I'd always recommend probably doing it on A4. And then, make sure we're on landscape and I'm on the Pro 1000 which is sat here next to me and I'm just going to click OK. Now you'll notice though that I've only got five columns here so what I need to do is in my print tab down here there's all these options so we've got templates, margins, the one we're after is layout. Now in here it'll probably default so you've got one column so for one picture it works quite well so that will be your single layout. So what we want to do is actually change the columns here, like we did in Lightroom, to seven. And then we get seven pictures going across from that variant. But also, they're all a bit squashed up at the minute, 
So what we can do is we can also play with the spacing and the borders here as well. Now, we'll notice they're all kind of squashed up in the middle at the minute. It'd be nice if they went to the edge. If we move to the margins, we'll see we've got an eight centimeter margin basically on either side. If we take this down on both, it will stretch these out for us. But now we've got a big gap in between. So what we need to do is just have a play with the cell width. We could kind of make them nice and chunky like that. And we can space them out nice and evenly. So in the middle, we've got our normal exposure, and then we've got one stop that side, one stop that side with quarter stops in between. The one thing that is a little bit limiting is we can't move the picture around like we can in Lightroom. However, it does a great job. So we can have a look and we can actually get a good idea of exposure and things in here. But let me give this a print and then hopefully you can see how powerful it can actually be. So let's give this a print and then we'll have a look and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I've printed that picture off now and we have this lovely big picture. I actually switched it to A3 Plus so you guys could actually see it a little bit easier. But like I said, I normally recommend to do this on A4 just because it cuts down on paper and kind of ink and everything and saves you a little bit of money. Okay, however, what we can see here with my seven strips, I've actually got my control image in the middle and I go between one stop darker and then one stop lighter. Now for me, what I see here is actually with the one stop, the road is a lot more vibrant and looks great. But also the mountain range in here and the blue looks really nice kind of in, I would say, I was gonna say the stop, but actually I think probably just a quarter of a stop. In the one stop overexposed, it just loses a little bit of detail. But I think near the control, but mainly just a little quarter stop underexposed in the mountains there will give a really nice print and give a really nice juxtaposition between the road and the mountains. Nice and even things out for us. So for me, I'd actually go for a combination of these. Now the beauty with working in Capture One is you can do this with your layers and mask bits off and add exposure and take away exposure quite nicely. So between the two, I probably have a really nice print. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dive back into Capture One speed it all up. I'm not going to take you through the whole editing process, but then I'm just going to make these alterations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overexpose by one stop the road section, and then also just put in a little bit of underexposure on the sky and the mountain range there. And then I'm actually just going to give it a print and I'll show you the finished print. Let's see how it looks and how it goes. So hopefully then we should have a really great print coming out. And then what this process has done is also shown us those ideas. I probably would have never thought of doing that perhaps, but it has shown me how different parts of the picture could look in different exposures in here. Now we could take this to another level and add in contrast and color, color corrections and things. We could do as many of these as you want. I would normally say stick to about one or two adjustments when we're doing it though. But let's dive back in and then I'll just make this final print and then I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so I've made my final print and here it is. Now, what I did was I did a little bit of retouching here. There's a little mark on the road and things I took out. But basically, this down here is plus one exposure to brighten it all up. And then I've put a minus quarter of a stop just in the sky here. And I did that by putting a mask on and just put in a gradual filter just all the way down so it blends nicely in here. And it looks great. And I'm really happy with it. And it was well worth doing all these little prints here just to bring everything in and just to see if I was missing anything as well. Because if it had come out really nice and dark, and actually here, it just looks a little bit flat and that's how I edited it for the screen. But now 
it comes out nice and vibrant and jumps off the page at us. And that's what hard proofing can do. The screen gets you pretty close, but it's that little 20% that we're just trying to play with and bring in and make sure that our prints come out looking absolutely the best they can. Now, I hope that's been useful and it's filled a little gap between all the Capture One users out there of how we go about hard proofing our images in Capture One. Now, before we go, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give me the thumbs up as well if you've liked this week's video. And as you know, we have a free ebook now which you can download from the PhotoSpeed website called The PhotoSpeed Art of Printing. And it covers everything from color management to turning on your printer, which printer to pick, right through to bookmaking, framing, mounting, and everything in between. So please go on the PhotoSpeed website and download and like I said it is a free book all it costs you just have to put in your name and email and then you'll be able to download it and access all that lovely research that I've spent 18 months putting down on page so I hope that's been useful and I will see you next week bye bye